we have here Amy Crutchfield Smith. And so we are now at a point with Seaborn where they are growing and changing and coming into a whole new um, era for them. And Amy is helping them bring it along. So we're just so excited to have her here to tell us all the new stuff with Seaborn. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Amy Crutchfield Smith. Yes, that's a mouthful. I sound like a British mustard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, eventually we'll go next to Smith. It's just easier that way. Um, and I was the uh, sales rep for Regent Seven Seas for 13 years. That's a long time. But this past year, this last year, um, uh, I had some lovely phone call from a friend who joined Seaborn and said, Amy, we're growing and we want you on our team. Because we are the best, and we only want the best. And I'm like, <laughs> but he drinks a lot too. <laughs> so after it was a it was a tough move because after 13 years with one company, you know, you get in a groove and you know everybody and you know how things work. But I have to say, this has been invigorating because change is really good and, it, and new challenges every day. You're learning a new company, and they're based in Seattle which is totally different culture, I'll tell you. I think, isn't recreational pot legal there? <laughs> so, yeah. Sometimes I wonder. But no, it's a wonderful brand. It's part of the Carnival family of brands, but it is the pinnacle in the ultra luxury category. Um, I was given the lofty title of strategic key account manager. And of course, since I'm the local girl living down in Atlantic Beach, I said, well, oh, Strategically, the key account here is Wallace Pearson. <laughs> so um, I'm pleased to say that my favorite travel professionals are part of my realm still. And if you all don't know by now, um, when I travel, I use a travel professional and I book with Wallace Pearson Travel. Yay. Yay. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's like the hair club for men. I'm like, I'm not just a rep, I'm a client. <laughs> So I, I'm a believer you all in great hands because these, this group of people do such a great job. They're going to make sure that you have the best bang for your buck and have the best experience possible. So enough about me. Let's talk about you. And how you're going to learn about Seaborn tonight. I'm just going to go over a little bit about who we are, what makes us different, because there are lots of brands out there. And I'm not going to, I love Region 7 Seas. I did, it's a fine brand and many of you sail them a lot. Um, and I thank you for that. But we're just a little bit different, and I'll try to explain that as we go along. But when I joined the company, I asked the president about the repeat rate. And I remember when I joined, well, mid, you know, a couple years into Regent Seven Seas, I asked Mark Conroy, our president, I said, Mark, what's the repeat rate? And he said, well, about 98% of our clients tell us on the comp cards they'll come back and repeat on Regent Seven Seas. He says, but the actuality is between 40 and 45% actually come back. So when I joined Seaborn, our president, Rick Meadows, I said, Rick, what's the repeat rate? He said, oh, yeah, it's low for 2016. It went down. I said, what is it? He said, 72%. Mm -hmm. wow. oh my now, that sold me. I was like, man, that, I have to get to know this brand better. So my point being is that it's well worth knowing. And it's been a quiet sleeper in the luxury category for several years, um, mainly because they filled the ships up without having to really market and push them because of that high repeat rate. So a little bit about us, where we go, our newest ships, and um, just a little bit more information about us. And please, afterwards, I'm more than happy to hang out, drink with y'all, and answer any questions you happen to have. So we win lots of awards. One of the biggest awards that we just won was the um, best cruise line under 1,000 births that it, by um, Travel Weekly, which is an industry paper but you'd also know the Travel and Leisure, the Condé Nast, all those awards. Awards are fine, but I think the proof is in the pudding and happy clients. So what makes us different? We're a small line, relatively speaking. We only have four ships right now. We have a fifth ship being uh, launched the first week in May. She's being built in Italy right now. So as you can see, it's a small little fleet. We're the youngest in the category of luxury ships. Uh, Odyssey, Sojourn, and Quest are the smaller ships. They carry 458 guests, 100% uh, suites with 90% verandas. And then our two largest ships are Encore, which debuted last year, and Ovation is joining us in May. And it's because of Encore and Ovation 
that's why I have a job. <laughs> so I love showing off pretty pictures of these ships. <laughs> so to give you kind of a little taste of what ovation is going to be like, here's just a quick one minute video to tell you. The Seaborne ovation is going to be spectacular. The experience has to do with exclusivity, comfort, elegance, style. She'll be all sweet, all veranda, with a fantastic ambiance. For Seaborn, detail is everything. We strive day to day for perfection. We have the most incredible partners. Chef Thomas Keller, Sir Tim Rice, Spa and Wellness with Dr. Andrew Weil, Brian Van Flandern, one of the best mixologists out there. Whatever you wish, it will be there. The whole ship is a gem. It is the finest ultra luxury hotel in the world. It just happens to be at sea. So the, the older gentleman with the glasses that you saw there, his name is Adam Tahani. I had never heard of him. I had to Google him. But lo and behold, I met him uh, right after I was hired. He's the uh, preeminent hotel, luxury hotel designer. Uh, he designs like beautiful hotels like the one and only in Cape Town or the Peninsula Hotels or even the Breakers in Palm Beach. And it was quite funny when I met him, I said, well, what is your inspiration for Encore and Ovation? He said, well, you know, I've never done ships, but I have been on private yachts and I like private yachts because there are a lot of curves and I believe the aesthetic is curves. They're sexy, they're sophisticated, they're social. Have you met my wife? <laughs> <laughs> she was curvy. <laughs> but you'll notice as I show you photos, as we go along of Encore, notice the curves. He doesn't like square corners. He doesn't think they're very social. But I really feel the ambiance on board, you'll find it's a cross between a private yacht and a, and a private country club. So our difference, this is a bit of an eye chart. We'll talk a little bit about each point. But may, basically, those of you who have sailed on other luxury lines, you're used to this, no nickel and diamond, right? I hate having a bar tab. <laughs> um, so most everything's inclusive. The only thing on board you, uh, you'll spend money on is a shore excursion or a spa treatment, or if you want the single malt scotch that's aged 52 years. <laughs> um, but much like uh, every other luxury line, we're not going to nickel and dime to death. Um, with Seaborn, we have some amazing strategic partnerships. Uh, a few of them were mentioned. I think the best partnership we have is with uh, Chef Thomas Keller. Uh, I was doing a travel event down in Boca Raton, and I met this lovely couple that said, we couldn't get an, a rest, reservation for um, a French laundry, so we took a Seaborn cruise. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it cost us just as much. <laughs> But no, Chef Thomas Keller is the first American chef to win multiple uh, Michelin stars, and he has inspired not only our specialty restaurant on board with no additional surcharge, but also we have uh, items from his menu on board uh, our main restaurant menu and uh, theme nights that he does for our casual restaurant. Uh, if you're into wellness or mindful wellness, as Dr. Andrew Weil, you may recognize him from PBS. He's the godfather of wellness. He's going to be sailing with us twice this year um, how, with a team of his, uh, uh, yeah, keep warm, honey. <laughs> with a team of his folks, to, and he's also helped design our spa treatments and our spa facilities. Um, so Tim Rice, does anybody know about this guy? Mm -hmm. Yes. He worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Bingo. He's a famous lyricist. And you may know his works like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, Joseph the Technicolor Dream the Pope, Evita, um, uh, Lion King. And we do a great Andrew uh, uh, Sir Tim Rice show where in between each work, they have a great video screen with he's talking and interviewing and telling you the backstory of that piece of music. And let me tell you the best story of the whole thing. I'll scroll it for you, though. Um, he said, I got a call from Elton John. And he says, I need your help. I want you to help write the lyrics for the songs for an adult cartoon. And he laughed. He said, yeah, right. And he, was, he goes, and I was the third choice. And when we finished doing all the songs for The Lion King, he thought, oh, this, is, this is stupid. Well, lo and behold, they won an Oscar for this, right? So it's yeah. great. It's a great partnership. It's elevated our, our entertainment. We also have a partnership with UNESCO. And when I say partnership, that means we actually pay them. 
bribe. Um, <laughs> now, every cruise line in the world goes to UNESCO World Heritage Sites, but since we partner with them, we get access to some places others do not. And when we have a UNESCO shore excursion, we have the head of that site come and chat with our guests about the intricacies and the preservation of that site. And a portion of your proceeds go to the preservation of that site. So it's a great um, a partnership. I love to use the example. There's some caves in Gibraltar that the government only lets 200 people a year go see. Seymour gets to get, take their people to these caves. That's a great example. Spa and wellness, as I said, Dr. Edgar Weil, you may recognize him. He's sailing with us twice this year. As I said, if you're into mindful wellness, and there's always a life coach on board. I don't think he would like me because I drink too much, but <laughs> I'm mindfully drinking. <laughs> Um, we have shore excursions called Ventures. These are optional shore excursion programs. We, they were born out of our Antarctica program. Now, each of our vessels has a collapsible marina off the back of the ship, so we can launch kayaks and zodiacs and catamarans, and we take naturalists with guests and go off the beaten path. Really phenomenal shore excursions that give you more up close and personal than just put you in a kayak and say, go paddle. <laughs> now some pretty pictures of uh, Encore. I think, uh, you know, I think all cruise ships are pretty, but I think this ship is lovely. I am very sophisticated. Another point of differentiation with Seaborne is that we have, we don't have a front desk, we don't have reception. What we have is what we call Seaborne Square. And ironically, Seaborne Square is round. <laughs> and it's, uh, ironically, right? But this is our living room on board. And instead of a front desk and standing in line to talk to a receptionist, you would go to one of these desks and talk to someone who's guest service, or like a concierge. Anywhere from, hey, can you help me with my internet, or I need to change my transfer, can I book a shore excursion? Any question you have, you have guest service managers there. But it's also our library. It's also, they have massage chairs. They also have a coffee bar. And it's always with cute, wonderful fresh nibbles and yummy things during the day. Now, even if you're not a tea or coffee drinker, you can't help but notice this fire engine red piece of equipment there, right? Well, Encore and Ovation are the only cruise ships in the world, purposely built, where they wrote, we roast our own coffee beans. And they had to build the insulation and the superstructure of the ship because heat, <laughs> the threat of heat, the fire is big on cruise ships. So it's also our library and our boutique area, but it's basically a lovely gathering place Seaborn Square, we call it the square, it's like in England, or Pia Piazza in uh, Italy. Guess what we call our restaurant? <coughs> the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's double ceiling and this beautiful Murano glass sculpture hanging above your head, you're praying to God it doesn't fall on your head. <laughs> beautiful acoustics and these, the areas are, have these walls of wine dividing the rooms to make it feel not so big. Um, my personal gym on board, no, I mean, <laughs> my personal favorite place on board is the observation lounge. It's the, on top of the ship. Every ship, I think, out there has an observation bar, right? Well, ours has this beautiful skylight with those glass sculptures of the fish, and it's the best place to be for sunrise or sunset with 270 degrees, big picture windows all the way around, and outdoor deck space. It's a lovely area of the ship to be. And I, of course, have to start off with the worst accommodation we have, right? I always like to say, you know, say, if you see prices from, this is what you have. It's 365 square foot uh, suite, and it's with a big balcony, but this is the very worst on set, uh, set, um, on, on court. <laughs> Moving up, I like the bathrooms. Double sinks on every bathroom, marble appointed, separate tub and shower. And the showers are in kind of in the corner here. There's the toilet here, but you can see the reflection here. It's kind of in the corner. Mm -hmm. Big shower height. That's important to me. Tall. I'm a tall girl, right? <laughs> tall people <laughs> unite. <laughs> that shower height's important. I like to say I'm 5'13", my husband's 6 foot seven. Yes, we're circus freaks. <laughs> <laughs> but shower heights are important in our world, yes. so this is a nice and tall for us. A little bit larger, we have our penthouse suites. They are almost, they're about double the size and square footage of our ver veranda suites. And you also have those lovely French doors that separate the living area and the sleeping area, which does come in handy. And when I sailed on this ship, I was forced to be roommates with somebody I didn't know. <laughs> lovely lady, 
but I didn't know she snored. Oh, so I can personally attest to the settee out there <laughs> the little, uh, oh, at the couch. I had, shame. I had earplugs. But, you know, and the nice thing is there's two separate TVs. There's a TV in there and a TV in there with two separate remote controls. So that's really nice, too. The extra space was warranted. And with two ladies, two professional ladies with a lot of hair appliances and makeup, that walk-in closet was huge. We loved the closet. It was like another uh, another suite. We could have had four more people in there. One of the larger suites is a signature suite on board. As you notice, the curves, there's not a lot of round, a lot, not a lot of corners. And then the bathroom on the, uh, the premium suites are really phenomenal. Our top suite, I didn't put in a picture of our winter garden suite, which is the very top, but let me tell you, they have the outdoor, it's midship, has an outdoor deck with a solarium, and it's, you have your own hot tub on your own veranda. And talk about luxury, you know. Yes, clothing's optional. Clothing is optional. It's your suite, you can do anything you want. That's right. And you can order up caviar and champagne and have a party. That's luxury, right? <laughs> and here's a shot of the, of the marina off the back of the ship. All of our ships have this, and this really comes in handy when we want to take our guests to a little smaller port to call it and put them in these water sports. Many times we have marina days, whether it be the Caribbean or the Med, we'll come into a small port of call where the, the captain says, this will be a fun, calm seas, and everybody will just have a pool day or a, a marina day where you can go water skiing, go um, get all the pool toys that you would normally have or the water sports toys you would have on a yacht. Now a little bit about where we go. We go all over the world. I'm really proud to say this line hits all seven continents. And uh, so we go all around the world. So I'm going to give you a little quick taste of where we go and how we go. Now a lot of people don't realize that Seaborn goes to Alaska. Last year was the first year we went in 15 years. And last year we debuted Encore, our newest ship, since 2011. So everybody was talking about Encore, nobody knew we went to Alaska. However, Debbie had some clients that went. Yes. And, and they loved it. So it was fantastic. Too cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's too cold for him. Yeah, too cold, right? We're going to New England now. He's from Maine. <laughs> He's from Maine? You're hardy. <laughs> But we do do something different. I mean, everybody, every cruise line in the world goes to Alaska, but we do do longer programs. And we go to places that the others do not go. Yes, we hit the main yes. Fort to call, but we do do a little, I'll tell you the story. On the long, longest one we do, the 14 day, we stop at a place called Clem 2. Anybody ever hear of it? No. I had to Google it. And I said, Clem 2, it sounds like you need to put a cream on With a sash, with a C. With a K. Clem to, it sounds like a disease, um, but it is a small village of First Nations people, and it's the population is 400. Great. Our ship is 458. We divide the group into three separate smaller groups. We go ashore. They have a community hall, like our Seaboard Square, um, and they do a cultural show, storytelling, song, dance, and we have a salmon bait with them. <gasps> and talk about fun. The same couple that I met down in Boca, she says, oh, I loved Clemtu. <laughs> Clemtu was my favorite port of call because <laughs> at the salmon bake, I sat next to one of these ladies who lives there. And I said, what's life like in February? And she paused and she thought, and she said, well, we do have a lot of children. <laughs> I don't know that's a good answer. <laughs> but I think, um, so instead of telling you about Alaska, I want to show you just a really quick little three minute snippet. We had a, a video company, well, basically it's the Wall Street Journal, co produced uh, a little snippet about our Alaska product and how we do things differently. So take a look. Adventure for us at Seaborn is being able to allow our guests to experience something unique, something that is bringing them closer to the destination, to the wildlife they're seeing, but in a very safe and controlled manner. Traditionally, small expedition ships were these really rough, bare to the bones kind of ships, bunk beds, shared bathrooms. That changed. Guests no longer need to make a compromise. We took two years to build out our Alaska itinerary with ventures in mind. We do go to the traditional ports of Ketchikan and Sitka and Juneau, but we also wanted to take the Seaborn ship to kind of more remote places that maybe our Seaborn guests hadn't been to before. 
These ships are built like yachts. And when I first joined Seabrook, I was quite blown away by the amount of deck space that we have. I haven't sailed on any other cruise ship that has had so much space per guest. When I walk around the ship, it's difficult to believe that we have 450 guests on board. It's just incredible. We get to go into places that a lot of ships don't get to go into due to our size and the length of our itineraries. We go up to a glacial lake. The mountains come rising up right out of the water. Pictures just don't really do it justice. I've had several kayakers indicate that it's probably the most exciting, special experience they've had in their lives. So we take you to what people want to experience as opposed to you know, what most people experience. This is Alaska everyone comes to see, but very few people do. So same thing, we're just gonna come straight up and over into the boat. There we go, it's a dusky, good. Straight up. This is a, again, a pelagic fish. Uh, we avoid the spines yeah. and stuff on all of them. Our biggest goal out of this is to kind of give the entire Alaskan experience. They're gonna go out and they're gonna catch their fish, they're gonna come back here and we're gonna clean their fish and we're gonna actually feed them their fish. It's great to have the Ventures team on. That's what makes the experience for our guests different. They bring on experts that are just amazing. It's really an in-house boutique kind of service. Tonight you might have dinner, for example, with Luki, our ornithologist. The following day you're joining for a lecture about birds in the north. It really gives our guests the opportunity to experience destinations and make them come alive with a team of naturalists that are around them all the time pointing things out and it just brings a lot more to their onboard experience. Our guests book a Seaborn cruise for that intimacy. They know that they're not a number on board, that they're going to get personalized service. It's that human element that we provide, that connection between our crew and our guests that I think is the secret ingredient. We make the guests feel like they're coming home again. We make them feel comfortable as soon as they walk up the gangway. It's really rewarding to me to be able to work for Seaborn, to work with guests, to be able to share the knowledge that we've gained over the years and see the light up on their face when they discover something they didn't know. It's an exceptional feeling. Now, I have to say, um, many years ago, I did Alaska at Glen Anna, which was on a, the same cruise I was on. And I could say, the one thing I left going, oh, I didn't get enough. I want to do more. And now that makes me want to go back. And I think our Alaska product is very different. And bless you. And you do notice that we are trying to take people off to different places, not just the same old gold panty and English sack wire. Yeah. Um, we do also, we're going to have many ships in the Mediterranean this year. Mainly the Odyssey will be in the Asiatic. Yeah. Oh, bless you. I you're not allergic to Seaborn. <laughs> um, the Odyssey will be sailing major, mainly in the Adriatic area, Athens, Croatia, Montenegro, Venice, that whole region. And then, of course, the Encore, our newest ship, will be doing the Western Med primarily. Um, we do lots of new, new cool things like shopping with the chef. I get asked a lot, are you guys going to include short excursions like Rita did? I'm like, no. Seaborn's not going to do that. Our clients are very well traveled, and we offer such a wide range of short excursions. There's some ports of call that we have up to 20, 25 short excursions to choose from. Um, people want something specialized, personalized, and small groups, and that's kind of who our client is. And so we'll never just throw in a generic bus tour of Barcelona, so that's not going to be an inclusion. However, with that said, we do things like the Klim2 excursion as a complimentary experience and shopping with the chef in lots of great ports of call in uh, the Med. And we go to some little ports that we, I have, of course, had to Google these too, but I did, we did go to Bandal when I was on Encore last May, mm -hmm. and it was the first time that ship had sailed into this little port of Bandal. I'd never heard of it. And lo and behold, in these small little villages along the French Riviera, they all they had a whole welcoming committee. It was a whole, like, 40 people were there. And then some were dressed in costumes. They had baskets of uh, lavender uh, sachets from Provence for us. It was really lovely. We felt special, you know, because no other big cruise ship goes there. Um, and of course, on Marina Day. Now, Northern Europe, we're going to have our newest ship, Ovation as well as the Quest, sailing both the Baltic region, Scandinavia, Russia. We've also added the Norwegian fjords, 
is the North Cape. And this year, of course, the hottest destination in Northern Europe is, ironically, Iceland. <laughs> Iceland and Greenland. Everybody wants to go to Iceland and Greenland. So we've added several itineraries visiting, incorporating that as well. Um, lots of great in-depth exploration of the British Isles uh, additionally. So, um, See, Australia, New Zealand, and the South Pacific in our summer, their, I mean, our winter, their summer, and Encore is going to be down there along with the Sojourn. We also are going to visit Canada, New England in the fall. Somebody's booked for that, right? Somebody's booked. Yes. Excellent. It's from uh, the, the, their beautiful longer itineraries. They're 10 nights, or 10 days, rather, and we do a lot of uh, regional cuisine, and we're going to be doing a lot of shopping with the chef while you're in Canada, New England. St. Lawrence Seaway is beautiful. And of course, Asia, again, in our colder months, there are warmer months. Southeast Asia, we do a lot of, um, a lot of hidden gems. And I, again, you're going to be Googling some of these ports of call like I did. Uh, the Quest is going to be doing, she is our retrofitted ship for Antarctica. Now, if you've ever had this on your bucket list, this is, this, this is the experience, I have to say. Out of all the itineraries that Seaborn has done in our 30 years of existence, Antarctica has always scored number one in the comment cards from our past guests. And we envelop not just Antarctica, six full days on the continent with daily landings, multiple <coughs> daily landings on ice floats and the continent, but also we're going to incorporate South America as well. So there are longer programs, 21 and 24 days. We even have one that goes over the holidays. So if you don't want dishes or relatives, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> But what we've been known for in our 30 years, one of the things that we invented was cavi uh, caviar in the surf. You know, and we do that in warm weather locations where our crew comes out in the surf with surfboards with caviar and champagne. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> well, we've adapted it for cold weather climates like Alaska and, um, and Antarctica. But they, get, they come out in their full dress whites and they get in the, in, in in the, the water. water. In the swimming pool. <laughs> Uh, and then also we're going to be doing the Caribbean, the Odyssey stays in the Caribbean uh, pretty much all during the winter months, uh, Barbados, St. Martin, shorter itineraries. South Pacific and Panama Canal, we do those as well. We have pre and post in Iguazu Falls and Rio de Janeiro if you want to stay longer as well. And then we have extended explorations. This is in lieu of a world cruise. Um, there's so many lines that do world cruises, we, that's a crowded space. So let's not do that, label it a world cruise. However, if you do one of these, they go up to 172 nights. Yeah, you could go around the world on our ships. One of the things that sets Seaboard apart is also the cast of characters on board the ship. Now with Region 7 Seas, all those years, um, about 90 to 95% of the clients on board are North American, which is great, but with Seaboard, we're about 60% North American, 20% from Great Britain, 20% from Australia, and 10% from continental Europe. So you have a nice cultural mix. Now, I, I, I'm asked a lot, because I know when I joined Seaboard, people were like, well, isn't it stuffy and formal? Don't you have to wear dress up? We do offer a formal night optional on, some, on most cruises, and I'll be honest, it's for the Brits. <laughs> if we're up to the Yanks, and the Aussies, we'd be in flip-flops and t-shirts. <laughs> but no, our dress code is country club casual in the evenings. Basically, we just don't want flip-flops and t-shirts and Daisy Dukes and crop tops in the evenings. But no, we do offer an optional night for people that do want to dress up. But I'm saying the Europeans tend to like to dress up more than us Americans. Um, so what we have going right now is we are pushing Alaska because nobody seems to know that we go there. So right now, if you book anything for the end of March to Alaska for this year, we give you shipboard credits, a three-category upgrade, and an air credit of $400 per person getting to Alaska. Um, additionally, we have a promotion coming up. It begins March 26th. Okay? It's going to be a menu of different promotions like shipboard credits, upgrades, you know, air credits. And I have to say, our business class air uh, upgrades over, over the water to Europe this summer are amazing. My message to you is with any luxury line, especially the smaller lines, whether they be on rivers or oceans, don't wait. Grab the space you want, because it is kind of a land grab. We go out at 99 to 100% full almost every voyage. So 
We are very popular, we do sell out, but my message to you is book early, book early, book early. Get the space you want. Even if it's within the next week, I'll give you shipboard credits right now within the next seven days, and then when this comes along, you can have them call back and say, hey, I just booked this. Can I get qualified for this promotion? And they'll say, yes, yes you can. We know Amy, we'll make sure it works. <laughs> so it's all who you know, not what you know, right? <laughs> so with that, just a last taste of seaboard. Let me tell you one last story. On, on Seaborn, what we like to create is what we call Seaborn Moments. Our staff and crew, it's a huge ratio. I'll tell you, it's, it's about, uh, on a, we just sailed on Odyssey recently, I just sailed on Odyssey recently, Call, carries 400, had 458 guests. We have 390 crew and staff to take care of us. <laughs> and when I joined this company, I did a side-by-side -side comparison with all the competitive set. And the space ratio and the service ratio with Seaborn were the tops of all the luxury lines. So that really sold me. But I understand the secret sauce is always the service. And it's how we make you feel and make you feel special. So when I first sailed on Encore a couple uh, in May, when I first joined this company, um, I was walking down a hallway. It was not my hallway, where my suite was. And I was just cutting through. And this lovely South African stewardess said, oh, hello, Mrs. Smith. Are you enjoying your first seaborne cruise? <laughs> and I said, oh, why, yes, I am. Um, have I met you? I'm sorry. She said, oh, no, 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 you haven't. Uh, I, uh, we have uh, profiles on everyone in the crew quarters. And every day we have name quizzes to learn everyone's name. And she said, I'll be honest with you. I don't know the Smiths and the Joneses first. <laughs> That was the easiest. The second story that really told me about a Seaborn moment was I was hosting a table with a lovely lady named Mrs. Wilson. She sails with us quite a bit, Valerie. And she sails about three times a year. So when the waitress came along and said, well, Mrs. Wilson, what would you like as your entree this evening? She said, well, I'll have that fish special that you described. She, without missing a beat, this girl said, oh, but Mrs. Wilson, the fish dish is stuffed with crab meat and you're allergic to shellfish. <laughs> that impressed me. Don't you know I cornered that girl later on, and she was from Jacksonville. <laughs> I told her I had to break the news to her that Jacksonville's sons were gone and now they're the jumbo shrimp. But that's not a joke. So uh, she shared with me, they take orders on iPads. And on the iPad, she could show me my profile, but not Mrs. Wilson's. Um, she said, here's a picture, here's your roommate, here's your hometown, here's your, I'm like, it had all my information, my allergies, my preferences, blah, 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 blah. I was like, where's my blood type in my mother's name? Kind of scary. It is kind of scary. I mean, I tell people, if you're in the witness protection program, don't go on Seaborn, <laughs> we'll find you out. <laughs> but what we do is we try to create those Seaborn special moments. Well, when we sailed on the Odyssey recently, we created a Seaborn moment because that was when the Jacksonville Jaguars we're going to play the Pittsburgh Steelers, <laughs> right? And the, let's face facts, the Jacksonville Jaguars, God love them, who have been the Rodney Dangerfield of the NFL for so long, <laughs> got no respect. So I cornered the hotel director and I said, hey, Luca, Italian guy, I said, we have some people from Jacksonville, we really want to see this game. Can you set us up in a room with a big screen TV? So while the bridge players are taking over, we can't use the bridge room. How about a meeting room? We just got a big screen TV in there. We had some technical issues, but finally they set it up. They gave us some beverages. We were having a good old time. 
at the half, we were screaming and hollering and carrying on and, and creating a ruckus. He pops his head and he says, is everything okay? And I said, we're winning. We stand a chance of winning this football game. Do you understand? The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be in the playoffs? Conference championships? Are you kidding? And he was so happy for us. About 10 minutes later, he comes on in. And guess what he served us? Champagne and caviar. <laughs> and Tracy and Linnea, Tracy and Linnea and I, and what, 12 other people, we were all paired on drinking champagne and boodles of caviar. When we left that room high-fiving each other, somebody turned to me and said, Amy, that was the best football game for us. <laughs> So with that, I just want to say thank you so much, and I do hope that you, and I have brochures and flyers in the back, you take what you'd like, but these ladies and uh, Wallace Pearson, they're, the, they're terrific. I wouldn't book with them if I didn't trust them, and I love them to death. So I know that you guys are in great hands, and I do hope that you find something with Seaborn, or I, something I've said tonight resonated, and I hope that you come and try Seaborn, because we'll spoil you rotten. You'll be part of the 72% repeaters. So thank you very much. Thank you.